In an amazing turn of events, Vladimir Putin's close associate, Yevgeny Prigozhin, has openly acknowledged the fact that he is indeed the man behind Wagner, a team of mercenaries that carry out Russia's unsavory tasks. With this revelation, it has opened a plethora of controversies around Yevgeny Prigozhin. Watch the video till the end as we tell you about Putin's chef and his notorious life. Early Life Born on June 1, 1961 in Leningrad, now known as St. Petersburg, Yevgeny Prigozhin was an active kid right from an early age. He participated in cross-country skiing and was a 1977 graduate of a boarding school with an emphasis on athletics. However, the real turning point that defined his life for years to come came when Prigozhin was caught for stealing in Leningrad in November 1979 and received a sentence with probation. Things took a turn for the worse in 1981 when the 20-year-old Yevgeny received a 12-year prison term for robbery, fraud, and engaging young people in criminal activity. Prigozhin served nine years of his total sentence, and after being released in 1990, he, along with his stepfather, established a network to sell hot dogs. Fortunately for him, the business started flourishing, and money started flowing in quicker than his mother could count it. Moreover, he started managing Contrast, the first grocery store chain in St. Petersburg that was founded by his boarding school friend and 15% stakeholder, Boris Spector. After a few successful years, sales started to decline in 1995. As a result, Prigozhin convinced contrast director Kirill Zimanov to partner with him in opening a restaurant. This resulted in the opening of the old customs house in St. Petersburg. New Island both of them did not stop there as they opened another restaurant in 1997, inspired by waterfront restaurants on the Seine in Paris. They spent $400,000 renovating a rusting boat on the Vyatka River and opened the floating restaurant known as New Island, which went on to become one of St. Petersburg's most popular dining establishments. New Island became so famous that Russian President Vladimir Putin and Jacques Chirac personally went there in 2001 and were fed by Prigozhin. Moreover, in 2002, he also entertained U.S. President George W. Bush. Not only this, Putin celebrated his birthday in 2003 at New Island. As a result of continuous visits and contacts by Putin, by 2003, Prigozhin separated from his business partners, opened his own independent eateries, and had grown close to Putin. Thanks to his connection with Putin, it started to appear that Prigozhin was free to participate in illegal activities without worrying about being caught. His company, Concord Catering, was awarded hundreds of millions of dollars in government contracts for the purpose of feeding government employees and schoolchildren. In 2012, Vladimir Pavlov, the president of Voenthorg, the organization in charge of hiring caterers to feed Russia's military, gave Yevgeny Prigozhin connected companies more than 90% of all orders for soldiers' food upon direction from Russian President Vladimir Putin. The contract changed the life of Yevgeny, as the two-year agreement had a value of 92 billion rubles. Years of success. He relocated his family to a house in St. Petersburg in 2012. His new house came complete with a basketball court and a helicopter pad. Yevgeny also owned a 115-foot yacht and a private jet, and started paying in cash for everything. Prigozhin started describing himself in correspondence as a presidential administration advisor and a knight of the for merit to the fatherland, although there is no official record of him ever receiving this medal. After a year of pure royalty, Sergei Shoigu, Russia's new defense minister, put a halt to the military's outsourcing of culinary service in the fall of 2013. Prigozhin's contract with the government was not renewed and for a portion of 2013, he only received 46 billion rubles. It is widely believed that some of the contract's earnings were utilized to launch and fund the Internet Research Agency. Yevgeny Prigozhin was now mostly referred to as Putin's cook because of the lavish meals he prepared for President Putin's inauguration. Yevgeny Prigozhin also started taking part in significant media and building projects, in addition to working in the restaurant and catering industries. One of Russia's greatest pro-Kremlin media conglomerates, the Federal News Agency, was founded by Prigozhin in 2014. Not only that, the wife of Yevgeny, Lyuba Valentinova Prigozhina, a pharmacist, also owned a chain of quaint shops known as the Chocolate Museum. She also opened her first luxury day spa by the name of the Crystal Spa and Lounge, which came in third place for the perfect urban day spa in 2013. The Troll Company 
Prigozhin rose to worldwide fame as a result of his funding of misinformation and internet trolls. It so happened that in September 2013, journalists uncovered a troll company by the name of Internet Research Agency in St. Petersburg. The company's employees were receiving payments for posting online comments supporting Putin's administration and against the opposition. The company had about 400 people continuously sitting at computers and posting on Russian social networks in accordance with pre-written scripts. Along with the Internet Research Agency, a network of businesses including Concord Management and Consulting Company, all funded and managed by Prigozhin, were charged with using internet trolls to try to sway the 2016 U.S. presidential election and other political events outside of Russia. The Internet Research Agency engaged in an information war against the United States by setting up phony social media profiles and disseminating misleading information. Other than the Internet company, Prigozhin was secretly connected to the Wagner Group, a mercenary organization that has participated in numerous operations as a private military contractor. As expected, Prigozhin time and again denied having any relation to Wagner, but the allegations were proved right when in November 2016, Dmitry Yutkin, who was in control of the Wagner Group, was put in charge of Prigozhin's food operations. Yevgeny Prigozhin was then unexpectedly involved in a major scandal on May 30, 2016, when St. Petersburg police stopped his motorcade as part of a planned raid on vehicles using state license plates and blue sirens illegally. The matter got worse when one of Prigozhin's bodyguards assaulted a federal police officer who was videotaping the raid after the convoy stopped. In response, the police literally tore the car's siren speakers out and arrested Prigozhin's bodyguard on charges of assaulting a law enforcement officer, a crime that carries a five-year jail sentence. Yevgeny and North Africa Moving on to North Africa, Prigozhin participated in negotiations between Libyan commander Khalifa Haftar and Russian defense minister Sergei Shoigu, who controlled the majority of the eastern half of the oil-rich state. The Russian government and the leader of the Central African Republic started working together. However, there were three Russian journalists who were constantly criticizing the Russian government while working for a news outlet. Wagner Group allegedly killed all three of them in July 2018, and in response to the killings, Russia's foreign ministry emphasized that the murdered journalists had been traveling without any official authorization. After that, the BBC's Russian service discovered a link between Yevgeny Prigozhin's media endeavors and the St. Petersburg beating of opposition figures. Over 800 opposition members who had received life threats had their personal information published on one of his media group's websites. Additionally, Prigozhin's organizations were allegedly responsible for assaults against the opposition during the 2019 Moscow City Duma elections. Furthermore, in an effort to seize the oil field in February 2018, Wagner assaulted Kurdish forces in Syria that were supported by the U.S. In response, the U.S. Army used air power resulting in Wagner and its allies losing scores of people. Even after all the killings carried out by the Wagner Group and Yevgeny's obvious connection with them, he never accepted his relation openly. However, until recently, when in a statement posted on the Russian social media platform VK on September 26, 2022, Prigozhin explicitly retracted his earlier denials that he was associated with the group and acknowledged that he had in fact founded it way back in May 2014. Additionally, he corroborated claims that the group had engaged in activities in other nations that supported Russian foreign policy. Wagner and Yevgeny Things were made clear with this statement, as Prigozhin had visited Donbass in April 2022 during Russia's invasion of Ukraine to personally supervise the Wagner Group's assault. He was also spotted beside Russian Duma member Vitaly Milanov, who had been to the front lines, donning military uniform. Furthermore, in a video that was leaked in September 2022, Prigozhin can be seen trying to enlist prisoners to help the Russian military's frontline offensive against Ukraine. Despite the fact that the video was made at a prison in Yoshkar Ola to recruit shock soldiers, there is proof that prisoners from a penal colony in St. Petersburg had been recruited to fight against the Ukrainian forces. Over the years, Prigozhin has been charged with engaging in corrupt business practices by the Anti-Corruption Foundation. A U.S. grand jury has also accused Prigozhin of offenses including identity theft, along with accusations of supporting and planning operations with the intention of interfering with American political and electoral processes, including the 2016 presidential election.
Furthermore, Prigozhin has been accused of having ties to a business that had sold low-quality food to Moscow schools and contributed to an outbreak of dysentery. As a result of the Russian invasion of Ukraine in 2022, the United States imposed visa restrictions and froze the assets of Prigozhin, his wife, son, and daughter in February 2022. Not only this, Prigozhin was also placed on the Federal Bureau of Investigation's wanted list. Moreover, the U.S. State Department announced a reward of up to $10 million in July 2022 for information regarding Prigozhin, the Internet Research Agency, and other organizations. Well, that's it for today's video. We hope you enjoyed the content of the video. If you did, show some love and hit that like button. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel so that you never miss out on any of the amazing videos we have in store for you.